Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to review the Mandula set of 36 colored pencils from Colonor. And um, I just got these a couple weeks ago and I haven't had that much time to play with them. So today I swatched them out and we're going to just kind of play with them and see what we think. These are by Colonor. Um, they are from the Czech Republic and they make a lot of fantastic pencils. Um, this set of 36 has a good variety of different colors and I took three of the basic colors and mixed them just to see what I could get um, and they mixed together pretty well and then on this little um, ball jar here I played with it a bit and um, I basically you know just wanted to see how while well they liquefied they all liquefied very well and um, I thought we'd just do a little demo with them to kind of see how um, how they perform. So I'm gonna, since I have actually have a canning jar on my table with um, with some paintbrushes in it, I'm just gonna draw the jar and I'm gonna sketch it in with this uh, pencil. Now these are numbered 1 to 36 but then they also have um, their num their name and then I think like probably a more specific color code so um, if you need to, to reorder a specific color you could do that. You could find these pretty much anywhere any um, like fine art supplies are sold so um, maybe not like in store you might have to order them online like from Jerry's Autorama or whatever your favorite art store is online but, um, but I don't think they're too difficult to find. Price wise I think they run about the same maybe a little bit less than like a Derwent um, and they do seem to be a very similar quality. I think once you get into artist grade watercolor pencils, you're just kind of noticing more minute changes. So if you already have some nice watercolor pencils, it's probably not something you need to run out and buy. But I do love to try them out, so I'm here just making a basic mason jar shape. Get that little thread on there for my uh, lid or whatever. Get that little area there that you can put the little wire thing on. I'm just going to sketch out the wire thing. That one's tough. I always get that kind of messed up, but actually that looks alright, so. Alright, and I'm just going to kind of shade it in a little bit. And when I start with a nice light color like this, I don't really have to worry too much about, um, about mistakes, because this is such a light color, I'll be able to just wash it away with some water if I made an error. If my voice sounds funny, I apologize. I woke up with a very sore throat today. I'm not sure why. Probably caught some sort of cold. I went to a new Maine women's game this weekend. The kids wanted to go. The girls wanted to go see the uh, the big girls play. And uh, I'm always convinced whenever I'm in a big group of people, I'm going to come down with something. <laughs> I'm not really a germaphobe, but... Um, I'm not, I'm not into crowds. I'm not into crowds, not into germs. Not that anybody's into germs, I suppose. So here I'm kind of getting that, that darker blue on the edges where the glass is thicker. Throwing in some details here and there. Inside the opening of the jar. Let's get the, uh, I'll put the, the, uh, the label on, but I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be visible after we liquefy it. So you can actually kind of try to press into the paper when you do it if you want to make sure it's going to be able to be seen. A little bit of yellow in there, lemon yellow. Let's see, we'll do a little bit of brown. There's some nice colors going. Maybe I'll do like a flower too. Maybe I'll do a poppy like I did a little poppy there. Why not? Um, you do like a bud. I don't know if you typically pick a, a bud. Oh, I'm sketching this with brown, just getting in that sanguine or sanguine? What would you say? Sanguine? Sanguine color in there. It'll be beautiful. I'm sure of it. Uh, get some reds, and some greens. There are some nice colors here. I will say that. I don't think I like them quite as much as I do the new Aqua Blends from Crafter's Companion. Um, they just seem to be softer. Like I felt like the Aqua Blends, I could use them as traditional uh, colored pencils as well as the um, as well as water based because they're so they were so creamy. But I think you know, like I said, you get you get into professional range pencils. There, the differences will be minute. I actually like these better than the Caran d'Ache 
super colors that I have. I don't have the Karen Dosh Museum one, so those are like the two super top of the line ones. I don't have those, um, but I like these. But on the super colors, they actually they're quite similar. They have a hexagonal um, base, so they're not going to roll off your off your table, which is nice, especially if you like to work um, like if you like your table slightly slanted, that might keep it from from going off on a little journey while you're trying to. That looks like an olive. <laughs> while you're trying to uh, to create. Oh man, my throat. I didn't think it was bad until I started talking. I'm gonna have to take a break after this. Um, and get some of this pretty mossy green. This is called uh, Olive Green Dark. I like that there's some nice, good earthy greens in here. Sometimes the smaller sets do not contain them. Now, okay, so I was just talking about the Aqua Blend. So if you were to buy a smaller set, you probably would have the first 12 colors in that smaller set, or some of these colors would be in that set. That typically happens with art great artist materials in sets. So if you decide you want to get them, you might want to get the largest set that you think you want so that you won't, you know, because generally by the set you save some money. Um, so if you think, if you thought about maybe starting with a set of 12 and then you're like, oh, I like those, I'll get the set of 36, you'll probably have 12 duplicates is kind of what I'm getting at there. Um, and with the aqua blends, if you buy one, they, they kind of have the more group towards like what you'd use the, the sets for. So if it's, um, you know, you get your basic colors and if you do florals, you get the florals. If you do more landscapes, you get the nature, you know, and uh, so on and so, so forth. If you did more portraits, you get the uh, essentials. It's kind of arranged that way so you don't end up with any duplicates. Of course, the drawback to that is they're new and those don't have um, open stock options like these if you ran out of one you could buy that color open stock so every brand has pluses and minuses I just wanted to kind of let you know that all right I'm using my old Primo water brush and they work great my dog just made a very bizarre noise um, they work great they stain the nib stain really badly but I've had this one for over a year my kids use them all the time so you know what do you expect as long as they're clean I don't care if they're stained So the colors are very pretty. I feel like they release really well on a wet with a wet brush. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way because I was noticing on one of my other videos that my hand was in the way. I think it's the way that my camera has to be set upstairs in my office here. Um, so I apologize. Now I like to take, well my brush is kind of dirty and I've got some of those colors on there. I like to kind of bring it into this area. This brush feels too soft for me. I'm not sure why I need to, I think it's because the paper's a little rough. Um, it's the Aqua B, uh, 90 pound cold press. It just feels, it's just rougher. Did, you know, two cold press papers from two different companies will feel differently. It's, it's just how they're made. And so you can see, this is a fairly, fairly soft brush too. Not as soft as the other one I had, um, but it's still liquefying my stuff just fine. Sometimes you get cheaper pencils or lower quality pencils. You have to fight with them to get you know the color to come out and I've, I've heard a lot about like some of the store brands like the artist loft like people say I can't get the color to release I'm like scrubbing the paper the paper's pilling and that's no fun and that you know that's not saving money because you're wasting your time you're wasting your supplies you know you're better off to wait for a sale or save up your money and get something that's going to perform well for you and it doesn't always have to be crazy expensive you know it just needs to be quality I'm going to try to keep my, my words on the dark because I like the way they came out. These are nice. I like, uh, I like trying different, different things. So, you know, you shop around, find the best price. You might even have them in your local store. I'm trying to think if our local AC Moore carries them because... Um, I know they have some Koi Noir pencils. I'm not sure if they have this, these though. Now another thing you can do, just like I mentioned before, is, and I've never had a problem with this, and somebody asked me recently in the comments um, if, if it was okay to do that, because they thought they had been told that they should never do that. But I haven't had any problem picking up pigment from the top of my pencil. I guess if you bought a package of pencils and it says don't do that, then, you know, you do it at your own risk. But, um, but I've never had a problem. Just don't stick it in the water. That could, uh, soak up into the wood and give you problems. 
All right, so let's see. I think I'll use a stark brown for the irony um, thing here. And I, oh shoot, I, got, I had it drawn pretty well and I lost my drawing, that's all right. And if I go on the wet paper, that's actually gonna keep it. It's gonna kind of lock that color down because I'm going over the wet. There we go. <clears throat> oh, and I want to put like a little bit of shadow reflections on the table. And I think I'm going to pick up color from my pencil for that. So I bet that the, the, the numbers, the golden numbers on these are probably different depending on what set they're from, just to help you kind of keep it organized so you can you know what you have and make sure that you're not missing any or make sure that you've got the right sets and the right colors, the right uh, pencils in the right set. That's fun. Sometimes if you just want a little, um, a little practice, just draw whatever's on your table. Look out the window, draw the chickens in the backyard or something. There, and after that dries, I can add some more shadows on the bottom. Now let's go up here to our poppy. I'm moving my paper so I don't stick my hand in the uh, wet paint. I do that quite a bit. At least I don't stick my paintbrush in my coffee cup. So yeah, I mean, you get a good deal on these. I, I Some people have said they've found these to be more affordable. Um, I don't think you'd be disappointed in them. I think though, if you already have a bunch of pencils, they might, they won't really offer much new to you. What I'm doing is just kind of wiping off my brush so I don't get too dark at that ridge. I need some definition in the petals here. So I'm just going to go in with a, with my pencil on the wet paper. Go. I'm just going to add a little more pigment on the inside there. And not bad for a quick little sketch just to just to see how they work. So I can do a few more shadows. I can't go right there yet because it's too um, it's too wet, but I can go up in this area. Let's see. Let's do a little bit more of that dark green. I don't want to pull in any colors that I haven't used yet at this point because um, It'll look funny. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that, my cat's outside meowing to come in. One second! <laughs> and there you go. That's pretty much it. Just darken it up down here a little bit. I'm going to go let my cat in. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on these pencils, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you've used them and want to offer any tips or advice, go ahead and do that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.